Welcome to Digital Photography 101. My name is Chris and I'm going to be your guide through the wonderful but yet confusing world of digital photography. Now you have to bear with me, this is my first video tutorial, so I might be a bit stuttering, there might be a few pauses in moments during the video. I do intend on doing a whole series of video tutorials covering all the basics of photography from inside the camera and the technology that's involved in taking a picture to the camera itself you know, various functions and buttons to off camera i.e. uploading your photos to a computer and what you can do with them after that. Now this video tutorial is very much aimed at a range of people from complete beginners through to an intermediate level. And maybe you've recently gained a digital camera absolutely no idea how to use it or maybe you're already a photographer but you need to scratch up on some of the basics well then this is the right video for you so where to begin well I think for anybody to grow as a photographer they should have a basic understanding of the technology that's inside the camera these are not massively confusing subjects but they do need to be understood the three main parts of the digital camera are the sensor the aperture and the shutter. Now in this tutorial we're only going to be discussing the sensor because I don't want to overload your brain or anything. You need to be able to absorb the information step by step, bit by bit. Now fundamentally the sensor is what sees the image. It's the sensor that records the light, that builds the image. The sensor is the eye of the camera. And photography is the science of capturing light. Now you may or may not know this but here's a little bit of I don't know, quiz night knowledge for you. The actual word photograph itself, as I understand it, is an amalgamation of the word photon and graph. The word photon literally meaning light, so the word photograph quite literally means a graph of light. Um, a camera is very much an imitation of the human eye, and like the human eye, a camera has varying degrees of sensitivity to light, or to be more specific, it is the sensor inside the camera that has varying degrees of sensitivity to light. And this is measured in something known as ISO or International Standards Organisation. ISO can range from about ISO 50 all the way into the thousands, for example ISO 12000. ISO 50 is the least sensitive ISO setting on your camera, so you will need more light to capture the image, but the advantage of a low ISO setting is you have a greater image quality. As you raise the ISO, less light is needed, but the image quality is reduced. So as you can see, there are advantages and disadvantages to varying ISO levels. Now you're probably thinking, well that's all good, but what ISO setting do I use? In what, what circumstances do I change the ISO setting? It's a good question, and it's a simple answer really. It really depends on what you're photographing, what is your subject matter, and how much light you have, and what's going to be the end product. Let me give you two examples to better explain this. You've got two types of photographers, on one hand you've got the studio photographer and on the other hand you've got a wildlife photographer. Now the studio photographer is primarily concerned with the quality of their image and will almost certainly keep their ISOs very low, ISO 100 or ISO 50 or the lowest it can be. But of course the advantage that a studio photographer has is they work in an artificial environment whereby they control the light the intensity of the light, the amount of light, the direction of the light, even the colour of the light. They have complete control over everything. Whereas a wildlife photographer does not. A wildlife photographer has to work with, with natural light. The natural light in itself is beautiful and it gives you a completely different effect. But it can be difficult to work with because you can't predict natural light, you don't control natural light, you have to work with natural light. So going off on a mad tangent, imagine you're on a safari as a wildlife photographer and you've been tracking an animal all day, it's getting dark, you finally caught up with the animal, you don't want to use a flash gun because you don't want to scare the animal or cause it any distress or you don't want the animal to become panicked and maybe attack. So flash gun is out of the question, so really the only option you're left with in a low light situation is to raise the ISO setting. Now of course to you the most important thing is not necessarily image quality, it may have been during the day, but now the light's being, now the, you know, you're losing light, the main thing is just now to try and get the image as quick as possible. So this is where you might raise the ISO setting. Now, of course it is a compromise, and you do want to maintain as much image quality as you can, but at the end of the day your primary concern is to capture the image 
because you have been tracking the animal all day and it would be very disappointing if you didn't get at least an image. And if you shoot with low ISO in a low light condition, you'll just get a black screen most for the most part. So I hope that gives you a better understanding of what ISO is. And remember, it is only one variable inside the camera. There are lots of different technologies that come together that hopefully over the next series of video tutorials, I'm going to help you to understand. And that's pretty much it for ISO Basics. Now we will be touching on ISO in future video tutorials uh, because everything in photography connects with everything else. If you change one setting, normally you have to change another setting to balance things. Uh, if anybody's interested, by the way, as a side note, I am a professional photographer by trade. Didn't start off as a professional photographer. I started off as a happy snapper. Then I moved on to a sort of hobbyist photographer. And then I, and then I took the final step and I moved into professional photography. Initially, I was paparazzi. It was fun. People don't tend to like paparazzi, so you don't get a, a very good um, reception when you go to places. Eventually, I packed that in and became a wedding photographer slash event slash portrait photographer, which is, a, for me, a lot more enjoyable. You get to connect with people. I do have a website, which is www.lawmanphotography.co.uk. Pop on over, have a nose around, see some examples of my work. Um, as of today, which I think is the 21st of December 2010, the site is under construction, uh, but 90% of it is functional and there are some photographs on there. And that's it, really. My name's Chris and you've been watching Digital Photography 101. Until next time, have a nice day.